Welcome to the virtual opening for our new exhibitions at Pomo Arts. I'm Janice Cotter, Gallery Manager. Before we start, I'd like to express gratitude to Pomo Arts Board of Directors, as well as say how thankful we are for our longtime supporters, the City of Port Moody, the Province of BC for their support through the Community Gaming Program, the, uh, as well as the Government of Canada for their support through the Canada Summer Jobs Program and Peller Estates. In addition, we want to thank our 2021 gallery sponsor, Edgar Development. Pomo Arts board, staff, and instructors have started doing the work to create a diversity, equity, and inclusion policy. We are working with facilitators and taking workshops that include anti-oppression, cultural safety, reconciliation, and land acknowledge acknowledgements. We want to ensure that when we complete this process, we will have a better understanding of the history that has brought us to live in this place so that we are mindful of the ongoing legacies of colonialism and able to make a sincere and heartfelt land acknowledgement that will not be performative. Until that time, please know that the people at Pomo Arts are making steps towards completing this process. Thank you for joining us this evening. It's been such a busy week. We have three new gallery, or pardon me, three new exhibitions installed and opening in the gallery today. I have to thank my gallery assistant, Natalie Robinson, for all her help on the installation. I hope you'll get to see these exhibitions. They run daily until um, October 28th. Now, I am just going to stop the screen share and um, you'll see all the artists that are with us this evening. Um, first of all, um, I, first of all, um, you'll meet uh, in our event tonight, you'll meet Hope Forstenzer and Ella Swan. Then we'll talk to the artists in our eighth annual Art for Life exhibition. We'll start with Hope Forstenser. Hope, would you tell us a bit about the Dream of Flight and your upcoming artist talk? Uh, sure, thanks for having me. It's, a, it's lovely to see so many of, of other artists' faces on this screen. Um, okay, I have a five-year-old who felt a need to uh, hand me something. Um, the wonders of, of Zoom. Uh, the Dream of Flight is a show I've been working on now on and off for several years in different ways. And it is um, a glass sculpture sh sculptural show where I use a whole host of different ways of working with glass to create wings of different types, mostly based on mythological creatures or uh, religious icons, a couple places and uh, various different histories of human beings fascination with the idea of flying and how far away from us flying is uh, as something we can't do. So sort of the centerpiece of the show that's currently in the gallery is a, is a very messy pair of Icarus wings made out of glass as Icarus definitely tried and failed in the wonder of flight. But there are also other uh, wings that represent different histories. There's seraph, uh, seraph wings or arch archangel, archangel wings. There's phoenix wings and there's- um, Just a teaser. Just a teaser. Just a teaser. Just a teaser. Oh, you don't want to tell them everything. I'm not going to give it all the- uh, Sorry, uh, I'm a little out of it today. Um, but uh, the, it's really um, through stained glass, blown glass, hot sculpted glass, um, and uh, fusing glass, it's a real exploration of the human fascination with wings. And uh, my artist talk uh, will be next Wednesday evening, the 29th. And I look forward to talking more in depth about individual sculptures, the history of the show, and uh, what all the wings represent. Thank you so much, Hope. Um, our uh, next artist is, um, is or pardon me, our next speaker is from Water Speaks. 
And the Water Speaks exhibition started as a national youth storytelling project. Ella Swan is here to tell us a bit more about it and when you can listen to the exhibition talk. Ella? Hello. Hello. So this is my very first Water Lucian event. So here we go. All right. Uh, my name is Ella Swan. So I am joining you from the territories of the Wasonic and the Lekwungen people. And I'm a youth board member with Water Lucian, which is a water focused organization founded in 2003. Um, there's a few different programs that uh, Water Lucian does, and I'll be speaking a little bit more about those just before the artist talk on October 7th. So look forward to that, finding out a little bit more about Water Lucian. But for now, I just want to make a quick intro, intro and talk a little bit about how this exhibition came together. So the idea behind Water Speaks is that youth from all across Canada, um, ages seven through 18, take part in digital workshops and in the past in-person workshops led by youth board members such as myself. Um, so there's a workshop portion and then this is all done in schools in the classroom. And afterwards, each uh, participant goes ahead and makes some sort of story based on whatever water is near them, be that a stream or a lake or the ocean. Um, oftentimes the stories are through creative writing and sometimes visual. Um, if they are creative writing, Young Water Speaks um, for the winners. It's, it's also a competition. So it's a, it's a workshop and it's a competition. There was about 2,500 participants in the workshops last year. And of those, about 200 submitted for the competition. And this exhibit is 10 of those people who have won. So uh, from seven-year-olds through 18-year-olds, if they were a, uh, a writing project, they were paired with a local artist to create a visual element and uh, then printed on banners. So come see the event and, and uh, yeah, check it out. Thank you very much, Ella. Um, I look forward to talking to you more about this on, uh, on October 7th. For now, we're going to say goodbye to Hope and to Ella, and we'll see them on September 29th and October 7th, respectively. And uh, uh, thank you very much for coming. Um, now we are going to go on with tonight's event with the Art for Life artists. I am going to, uh, whoops, share a different screen. All right. Oh, I think I've got the right one shared. Okay, so um, we are going to go on and uh, uh, talk to all of our, uh, pardon me, that threw me off. Uh, we're gonna go and talk to all of the artists in Art for Life. And uh, Art for Life, from fun art to fine art, um, this group exhibition is geared to the young and the young at heart. Art for Life runs five weeks and includes in-person and virtual art displays that will delight the whole family. The goal is to cultivate artistic growth in our community by inspiring and engaging children while raising opportunities for participation and discussion. The benefits in art, of an art education affect every area of life and we hope it's a lifelong journey. This year, we have 27 participating artists in Art for Life. And um, one of our artists joined us late, uh, Kate, and Kate will have to leave early. And since we've started our um, artists in reverse order this evening, as it gets closer to the time when Kate has to leave, we I didn't get a chance to talk to her before the event started. So we will switch out and move from wherever we are to uh, let Kate speak to her art and then come back to where we left off. So um, that will cause a little bit of a, a, a confusion there. If we don't get to Kate in time, we wanna make sure she has an opportunity to speak to her art.
But our first artist up this evening is Jeff Wilson. Jeff, do you want to uh, step forward and take your microphone off and tell us a bit about your work in the show? Hi there, folks. My name is Jeff Wilson, and I am a full-time acrylic painter based out of Portside uh, Studios in Vancouver. And the three pieces that I have in the Art for Life show are um, kind of stylized graffiti uh, rail cars. Now, these are rail cars that I've seen at the back of the studio. Um, and I tried to combine the sort of flat representation of, uh, of the graffiti with a sort of a more realistic rendering of the of the rail cars. And uh, although they make quite a nice um, kind of a quick kind of image, and then together in a line, they give this sort of artistic illusion of a, of a line of rail cars imitating uh, the, the, uh, the, the arrays that you see across the country. So did you want to speak to each either of them? Any of them? Well, I, think I just got a kick out of the one with the Jetsons. <laughs> oh yeah, well this is some of the real cars, some of the artists who do it, they, they put the, the cartoon characters on them. Um, that's a, it's a, a Wheat Board of Canada one by a bloke called Otis and uh, yeah, he included George Jetson in that one. Um, <laughs> And then Saskatchewan has a has their own fleet of rail cars. This one, uh, uh, so they have quite a, a distinct green green color. I'm not sure, quite sure who the the artist was. And then the last one below is a regular Canadian one, a re regular Canadian uh, green car um, with yet another unknown artist uh, whose work showed quite well against the, the sort of rising light under the the Clark Street Bridge. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff. Um, we are going to move on to our next artist. Oh, there, there's an installation shot in the gallery. Our next artist is Claudia Weeb. Uh, I hope I pronounced that wrong Cla or correctly. Claudia, are you here this evening? Uh, can you unmute? Sorry, I'm gonna try and see if I can, okay. Well, it looks like we may not have Claudia here this evening. Um, so uh, Claudia says that being creative has always been very important to her. She's a self-taught artist who creates abstract paintings and mixed media art with acrylic paints. Her paintings are inspired by the ever-changing complexities of love, loss, joy, and grief. Uh, she says that life has taken her on many different roads, being a pediatric nurse, a caregiver, a mother, a wife, a teacher, mentor, and today an artist. Having faced many challenges in her life, she has learned to be open to new opportunities. And she, to, uh, pardon me, and she has always had the desire to personally learn and grow. She is originally from Germany and has been living in Canada for over 30 years. And her home and studio are in Vancouver. And uh, she has three, these are three small pieces that are each 10 by 10s. And then she has um, a larger piece uh, called A Busy Mind. And you will see them in the hallway in the gallery. So our next artist up is Catherine Waddell. And I'll ask Catherine to uh, take her mic or, or mute off and come forward. And I have to say, Catherine, um, as part of our Canada Summer Jobs Program, I am allowed to hire gallery assistants. And Catherine was the gallery assistant for the first portion from May until uh, the beginning of August. And so I have to credit Catherine with the design for our Art for Life graphics this year. We're very fortunate that she was able to be here and uh, lend us her skills for a few months. Catherine, do you wanna come forward and speak um, about your work? Of course, yes, I'm right here. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me. 
Um, again, my name is Catherine Waddell. I also go by Cat, if that's easier to remember. Um, I'm a second generation settler Canadian who currently lives on the traditional territories of the Katsi First Nation and Kwantlen First Nations people. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Emily Carr University of Art and Design, uh, where I did a major in visual arts and a minor in social practice and community engagement. Um, in my professional art practice, I explore environmental, cultural, and social practices that connect communities across disciplines. And I utilize mixed media techniques in my painting, drawing, and sculptural practice that often explore the human condition as it exists within the Anthropocene. My series of mixed media works that you can see on the screen right now uh, called Temporal Existence. These pieces were born out of a public art intervention called Please Leave Me Your Footprints. And I did this to witness how we share, use, and connect with the spaces around us in our communities. In this um, community-based project, I documented the ephemeral moments shared by my community. And I began this series when I first moved out to BC and I continued it during the pandemic by documenting our daily commute to witness how this globalized event affected and continues to affect our everyday lives. The community-based practice of this work connects with Art for Life's theme of engaging with the young and the young at heart through artistic play in the everyday, transforming banal moments into moments of connection through art making practices. Um, I met people from all walks of life when I made these pieces from families, students, adults, children, elders, dog walkers, joggers, and construction workers, um, even cyclists, all sharing the same path, sharing the same space, but through different moments in time. And through this work, I presented an opportunity for my community to engage with their everyday commute in, uh, in a different way and leave me with their footprints to mark the shared moment. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kat. Thank you for coming back tonight. It was lovely to see you again. Um, so we will move on to our next artist and that is Norm Vernon. Um, Norm, I know that I'm going to read some information about you, but did you, is, if Bev is there, did she, would you like to say hi, take your mute off and say hi? Hi. Hi. I'm so happy to have you as part of Art for Life. Well, thank you very much. It's wonderful to have your, um, carved boats and your paintings in the show. I'll just read everyone a little bit about, about you. Um, Norm Vernon has led an extraordinary artful life. Norm began uh, creating from an early age, drawing characters that made students and some good na natured teachers laugh in school. Um, when he became a contractor as an adult, building throughout Vancouver and the Lower Mainland, he drew his own architectural drawings. Then later retiring as a contractor in his late seventies, he turned his talents to creating a multitude of furniture and then carved more than 30 boats out of a cedar tree that he downed in his backyard. And we have um, some of the boats in the exhibition. He used his woodworking tools and skills to cut out thousands of stockings that were filled by BC Tell volunteers for charity. When his wife took ill, um, Norm didn't like being away from her. So he put down his tools and took up painting. Inspired by his love of nature and the outdoors and his many memories of life in Vancouver and travels around the world, he painted without direct references, adding to the whimsical nature of his personal style. Norm wishes he had had the opportunity to attend art school, but looks back fondly on all of his experiences and with gratitude for the wonderful life he has lived. His journey shows us how an artful life can be carved 
through varied and unexpected circumstances. Creativity flowed through every part of Norm's life and his paintings and carvings tell you the stories of his fascinating lifetime. Uh, thank you, Norm. We're very happy to have you in Art for Life. You are the epitome of what this show stands for um, in that art is a lifelong journey. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we will move on to our next artist. Thank you so much, um, Norm. And our next artist is Mickey Becerra. Now, Mickey is our ceramic artist in residence, and I'm hoping that they are here. Mickey, are you here? Okay, then um, Mickey will be having a, uh, it, it, when our ceramic artist in residence starts every year, it, usually the beginning of September, and the residency runs a full year. So Mickey has just started their residency, and they will be having an exhibition um, from July 28th to September 4th, 2022. And Art for Life is a way for us to introduce the ceramic artist in residence to our, uh, to our arts community, the Pomo Arts arts community. And Mickey um, has uh, let us have one of their pieces, Pea Worm, in the exhibition. It is a uh, sculpture that's about 30 inches high and it is in a wonderful place. Beside, you'll see a, a gallery image later um, of where Pea Worm is sitting in the gallery. I think it's the perfect place for it. But I'd like you to um, take a chance when you scroll through the galleries and uh, digital gallery or come in person to read more about um, Mickey and um, their upcoming exhibition next year. They have a whole year to create work for it. And um, our next artist is Lee Chin T. Lee, are you here? Yes, I'm right oh, here. Okay. Oh, I'm so happy to have you. Um, it's kind of a nice story to have Lee in Art for Life Lit this year. Um, during the uh, lockdowns last year, Lee was part of our Igniting Hope exhibition. And um, that was, I believe, her first exhibition. And it but it ended up being canceled as an, a gallery ex, uh, exhibition and we were only able to do it digitally. So we met for the first time when she dropped off her artwork um, a few days ago and uh, it is now installed in the gallery. Lee, would you like to say a few words about um, yourself and your artwork? Sure. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad to be part of this exhibition this year. I'm so happy. So for this exhibition, I have created this series of painting of three different states of mind. The first one you can see is self-belittling. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then the second one is escape. And then the third one is rise above and beyond. As you can see on the screen right now, the judgmental disapproving facial expression or rather mask that you can see, they represent the unkind voices in our heads that make us feel less discouraged and undeserving. The truth is no one speaks more to us than ourselves. Therefore, only when we are kind to ourselves, embrace our imperfections, we'll be healthier mentally. That's from my point of view. And that's why I created these three paintings as a series. So I use acrylics as the main medium in all three pieces. I've also incorporated a fun material in the second piece, as you can see in the middle one. Um, you can see the 3D fingers pointing hands. They were made out of toilet paper tubes. So it's part of the blaming, the discouraging, the disapproving dramas on top of the facial expressions that I've added on the painting. You can scroll up a little bit. Oh, to second. Yeah, there you go. 
Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, did you want to speak to the third piece? Oh, sure. Um, the third piece is the third state of mind. Um, I call it rise above and beyond. This is when we have to remind ourselves to be mindful and take control of our emotions. We take notice of all that is good in life, connect ourselves with nature, because these unkind voices exist only if we allow ourselves to submerge along them. Thank you so much, Lee. And I'm so happy that it worked for you to be in the actual gallery this year. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. We will move on. Oh, and there is the artwork, um, an installation image of the artwork. Our next artist is Shivani Singhal. Shivani, are you here this evening? Um, we, we had a little bit of technical issues earlier, and I think some people were having difficulty getting in. So I'm hoping we didn't lose any of our artists. Um, I'll just read some of the um, information about Shivani. Um, she is a self-taught artist living in the Lower Mainland who has a strong passion to express her thoughts and feelings on canvas. Professionally, Shivani is a seasoned HR advisor, having worked with global companies to help them craft strategies, um, just like management. Art also involves touching people's life. And this is what Shivani is really passionate about, positively impacting people's lives through her work. Her paintings tell a story of fanciful simplicity through bright colors. She loves portraying everyday life moments with a playful and cheerful tone and likes using vibrant colors and designs. Um, have a look at some of her works. These are uh, two lovely, um, they're four by four birds and we've actually hung them on the wall in the uh, way that they're coming up um, on the uh, on the screen, so Shivani says that she doesn't paint pictures; she paints her heart, which is a lovely sentiment. Here is another uh, installation shot. You can see Norm's work over on the right. And um, we have uh, several other artists in this image as well. And I believe our next artist coming up is, yes, this is Shelly Rothenberger and um, her work is coming up. Shelly, um, are you with us this evening? I thought I saw you earlier. Can you unmute and join us? Ah, oh, hello there. Hi. Hi. Um, would you like to say a few words about yourself and about your artwork? Um, I uh, am not from uh, the West Coast. I'm originally from Thunder Bay, Ontario. That's where I did my undergrad. And then um, I went to Edmonton and did a master's in painting. And uh, from there I came here. And uh, it's been great ever since i've been um, exhibiting i've been teaching and i've been just so busy in so many of the different art communities in the lower mainland it's been really really good in the 12 years that i've been here um this series is Shelley, uh, i'm hello? sorry can i interrupt you for a second i've just got a message that we have only a couple of minutes left to put kate Kate's work in before she has to leave for her appointment. Okay. I, I apologize for interrupting, but I'm going to get Natalie to share Kate's um, artwork and then we'll come back to yours after. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Kate, are you here? Hi, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, I'm so sorry about that. No, um, don't worry about it. It's okay. It's a Zoom appointment, so I'll just go from this Zoom to that Zoom. Okay. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> So if you can take a minute to talk about your work, I'll get Natalie sure. to scroll down to your artwork. Okay, sure. Yeah, I can start with, I'll start with C-Palm here. So this painting was um, 
was created after being at a beach here on Vancouver Island. Uh, it's called Mystic Beach. And um, there's quite a few of these sea palms. And I was really curious about what they were because they just had such a strange look. They look like these small palm trees. And so when I got home, I did a bit of research. I really like doing research. I'm, I just like to learn. And I, I found out that they're actually endangered. And so I wanted to kind of highlight this uh, this species um, to not only create something that uh, shows its habitat where it lives, um, but so that it can also start, kind of start a conversation with uh, people um, who may not realize that this actually is endangered. Um, and so if you look like down at the tide pool there, um, this is this is kind of like a typical tide pool scene that you'd see on the west coast here and um, the sea palm really like to live amongst um, mussels in particular so I just thought I'd add that in. Yeah. Natalie do you want to move on to the next one? So this one is I I can't say the pronunciation exactly because I found the the um, Wasanich name for this in a book uh, but the title Snuez is um, the name of this place on the settler named Texeda Island. Um, it's also known as Echo Bay. And for this piece here, I just wanted to highlight again, some of the natural um, flora that's in this area. And uh, I'll leave it at that so I can keep going. Um, this final piece here, wind pollination, is the first of a series of three paintings that I'm doing about pollination, local and native pollination, um, local to the Pacific Northwest. Um, and in this piece here, you can see the cottonwood tree in the middle, and it's a bit difficult to see because it's small, but uh, in real life, it's a bit, it's quite larger. Uh, and you can see the seeds flying around. Um, and that's kind of a theme that runs throughout the painting is um, local native plants that are being pollinated. So you can see their seeds floating throughout the painting uh, by wind. So wind is a pollinator. Um, I think sometimes we forget that or maybe we don't even know. So this painting and the series that I'm working on is just a way to um, kind of bring to light these aspects of pollination that maybe we've forgotten or didn't know about. And I have two other paintings, but they're not in here. Um, one's about uh, bird pollination, so hummingbird species, and then the other is about insect pollination. Thank you so much, Kate. And um, I uh, hope you make your appointment. I think you've got about- I've got two, two minutes. minutes. <laughs> I think I can do it. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. thank you so much. We will thank go back. Thank you so much, yeah. Okay. Really Bye. interesting work. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Okay, and Shelly, I will ask you to come back forward. I sincerely apologize for interrupting you. I didn't see the message um, before you started or I wouldn't, I would have gone then. Okay. So please oh. tell us all to, uh, about your work. <laughs> These, this series is based on a kind of toy story. Um, it's kind of a crazy toy story. It's I've abstracted a collection of toy-like characters and placed them in a strange environment in the midst of an action-packed adventure. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what it's about. Um, when I start a painting, I don't, uh, I don't know what it's going to look like. I uh, kind of work intuitively and I use mixed mediums. I use um, bits and pieces of old uh, paintings that were torn up and ended up in the bin. Um, I never throw them away. I, I keep them and I think I can construct something out of them. And that's where a lot of these uh, textured pieces and these various uh, shapes and odd um, things come from is uh, recycling of old paintings into something new. And I also take images from um, different magazines and things. And, um, I teach in a 3D animation special effects school, so you can see kind of um, a little bit of things that are 
related to that in these images where I've, I've taken these, uh, the uh, process sort of, of uh, animation and 3D animation and kind of made it visible in these paintings, um, thereby creating this, um, this adventure. These uh, images that are, these toy-like images that are on the move and, and uh, um, involved in something and um, yeah, so that's uh, that's what it's what it's about in these works, and the paintings themselves are um, started from paintings that I've recycled and um, from former paintings where I've gone into them and created this um, different surface using a sander. I sand down the painting and. Um, sort of excavate it and come out with these interesting um, areas of texture and marks and, and uh, scratchings of color. And I work into those and, and um, add the, uh, the um, collage bits and all of a sudden I've got something there that's uh, you know, leading me towards uh, um, a completed uh, painting. So well, that's pretty much what these are about. Um, um, just so people know when you're, if you're um, seeing the artwork in person, you'll see it full size. But if you're scrolling through the digital gallery, you are able to click on the pieces and it will enlarge it um, so that you can get a better look at the painting in the digital gallery. But still, there's nothing like seeing it in person. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can't um, imagine the textures in um, Shelley's work of the collage. So I hope you'll come and see them in person. Um, thank you so much, Shelley. And again, I apologize for the interruption in your uh, talk. Our next artist is Adeline, Adeline um, Pufong, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I'm not sure if Adeline is here tonight. Um, I know that she uh, works in um, film and television and um, she, um, she, uh, uh, sorry, uh, she wasn't sure if she would be here on time. So, um, I will just read Ad Adeline is uh, an Irish Cameroonian artist who is currently based in Vancouver, Canada. She graduated from Limerick School of Art and Design with a Bachelor of Honours degree in Ceramic Design and in, in 2010 and later went on to earn a postgraduate certificate in Innovation, Entrepreneurship and, and Enterprise at um, University College Dublin. In recent years, she has swapped her hand building tools for paintbrushes and focused on capturing the world around her in oil paint and acrylic. When she is not painting, Adeline can be found in, or pardon me, Adeline can be found in, um, doing various crafts, building, knitting, and working in the film industry in the sculpture, props, or paint department. And um, she has three pieces in the show. Um, this one is oversized, so you can click on it and it'll make it smaller um, to get a better view of it. It just was so beautiful to scroll through. And uh, um, she says that, uh, what did she say here? Um, her work is an empathetic release often created from photographs she takes herself. She tries to incorporate nature and explore poignant occurrences that help her reflect more deeply on the workings of human nature and the influence um, our surroundings can have on us. Um, she works mainly in oils, sometimes acrylic. She uses bright colors and light to blur the lines between abstract and photorealistic. Our, we'll move on now to our next artist, uh, Priscilla Omulo. Um, I'll have to 
check if I pronounced it correctly. Priscilla, um, you were here earlier. Are you able to unmute and come forward to talk about your work? Uh, yes, I'm here. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Um, welcome. And uh, would you like to say a few words about yourself and about your artwork in Art uh, for Life? Sure, thank you. Um, as mentioned, my name is Priscilla Omulo. I'm a Sartlip First Nation. <clears throat> I've been here on the unceded territory of Coquitlam for almost 12 years. Uh, most of my work has been in psychology uh, with a focus in mental health and addictions. Um, but I do find art to help me, <clears throat> I guess, say things when I'm not too sure how to find the words or to get through things. And uh, so with this piece that I've done, it was a part of uh, a photo voice project um, that was for intergenerational survivors of residential school um, or residential school survivors. And so it was nice because my mom came with me a couple of times when I went. <clears throat> and this is Sinequa, which is Wild Woman of the Woods. Um, anyone who may not know the story, Sinequa is a Coast Salish story that, ta uh, that was taught to me as a child. And uh, many of us children would know that it was one of those scary tales where you're, you're told it's a cautionary tale. And so she's in the woods and, you know, if you're there, then you um, could, she could steal you and put, put, put you in her basket. And so I combined this story of Sinequa with the, um, I guess, with the realities of RCMP and what has happened historically with the RCMP involvement in children going to residential schools. Um, so this uh, is kind of like a political piece, I guess you could say. Um, the, the basket is cedar woven. I did go uh, pick cedar with an elder. Um, so I know how to harvest cedar and how to treat the cedar and uh, learned how to weave. Um, before I had done this project. I, I've known how to weave for a little while, um, but I wanted to put it on the canvas as a way of implementing the traditional and non-traditional forms of art together. Um, there's three ribbons in the basket. So the orange is for the uh, children of residential school and the survivors. The red is for the um, Murdered and Missing Women's Inquiry, uh, talking about the murdered and missing Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirited. And the black is for the RCMP-related Indigenous deaths um, to highlight the fact that there is a dispropor disproportionate amount of Indigenous folks who are brutalized or murdered by RCMP. Um, and when I created this, there's like the textures I really enjoy working with. So it's coffee at the bottom and um, to, to give it that kind of feel. But then it's also uh, some clay in the top where the trees are. And I struggled to make the trees a bit, but I wanted it to be so much in the background and just so blue and just so dark and, and there, but not there because I really wanted the rest of it to come forward and to have the the hopefully the feeling that you know it's it's not us right like as, as indigenous folks our belief is that you know trees and land and water is all life and I wanted it to look a little lifeless you know because we're we're being taken from our land we're being taken from our families and I wanted it to to represent um what's happening historically and currently Thank you, Priscilla. Um, I really appreciate it. We talked about this before um, the exhibition um, and I appreciate the fact that you have shared this with us and shared the story behind it because I, I know it can be um, difficult to be in a vulnerable position and um, I'm happy that you were able to trust us um, with this. Thank you. 
Um, and the coffee smells really good on the painting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, when, when Priscilla brought the work in, um, she says, well, I hope it doesn't, you know, come off at all. And I was like, whoa, I haven't heard that one before. The coffee doesn't come off. And I said, I haven't heard that one. That's a new one for a medium. I think it works fabulous. And it adds that extra texture. It, it actually has um, texture and scent. So you'll enjoy looking at the work. Thank you so much, Priscilla. Thank you. Um, we will move on to our next. Oh, and here's an installed. OK, this is an installation photo that shows um, Priscilla's work and um, some of Kate's pieces and an upcoming artist. Plus, this is Mickey's uh, pea worm. And um, our next artist is this it nope not nope not the right one um, <laughs> um there is our next our artist uh for this piece is still coming up our next artist is monica moscoso and monica emailed me just a little bit before the event started and said that um she was feeling ill and not able to attend the uh virtual reception to speak. So I will um, uh, read a bit about her and um, then uh, we'll look at her artwork. Um, so uh, Monica was born in Mexico in the state of Guadalajara. Or, ooh, I'm not going to pronounce that. I don't think I'll have it right. I apologize. Um, and uh, she followed her taste for drawing in a self-taught way. Um, making copies of uh, famous murals and in particular works from Diego Rivera, the uh, great Mexican mural muralist. And she says, this is how her taste for art began. But the artist who has the most influence on her is the French painter Henry Matisse and his works in the Fauvism movement. And she actually, when she finished university, she worked with the government of Mexico um, in an area supporting artisans and handicrafts. And um, she also moved, went and spent time in, it seems to me she went and spent time in France. Um, she was involved, okay. In Mexico City, she took human figure classes at the Academy of San Carlos for one year. And in 2005, made the decision to travel to France, starting in Marseille. And she continued her studies of drawing and the human figure there, and also worked with glass techniques. Um, she moved to Canada in September 2009, arriving in Montreal. And at this time she took sewing classes and worked in a silk screen printing shop. In 2013, she moved to BC and New West. And in 2015, she took a course on jewelry and she currently works in the studio of a diamond jewelry company. Now in 2021, she intends to continue her artistic work in this new project based on the production of custom made dolls. They are made of fabric and embroidered with a logo cat and sheep. Everything is handmade using recycled materials. She says that her artistic work is a constant search for different media using pictorial representation in acrylic or oil or using more um, craft techniques. She likes to recreate the things she finds beautiful, human beauty, the greatness of nature, worlds or fantastic characters. This, piece, this is a triptych um, called Submerged. And um, then she has two of her dolls in the show. Um, Monica has been doing her uh, cat and sheep series of, of dolls for several years and um, is constantly doing new versions of them. This is the third uh, time that we've included different variations of them in Art for Life. And this one is a bunny doll. And um, the, the, this series, uh, they're all trapeze artists. 
And this one is called a uh, lemon ice cream doll. And actually the headpiece, which it's difficult to see in the picture, the headpiece is an ice cream cone. So I hope you'll get to see those in person. Our next artist is a well-known local potter, Jillian McMillan. Jillian, would you like to say a few words about your artwork and yourself? <laughs> can you hear me? I, I can hear you. Okay. Um, well, I, 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 I'm not too sure what I should say. Um, um, I can't see myself on the screen right now, but there are my pieces. Um, I've put six of my jug birds in, in the show. For the first time, I haven't been in Art for Life before, um, but having been, well, I live two blocks away from the Art Centre and I've been very much involved with the Art Centre for a very long time. And um, uh, it, I thought it was about time that people had another look at some of my jug birds. Um, so there's a chicken, um, a chicken teapot and, and jug. Those are, I, I'm very involved in making functional things. Um, so, you know, they're functional, but they're also fun. And I hope that they will be enjoyed by the young and old coming to the show. So you have your chickens and... Um... There's a, a flicker, a northern flicker. Mm -hmm. And the next one is an eagle. And the nut, the lap one there is a is a is a harlequin duck, and it is a jug that you can um, put the liquid in on the top of his head, and he's so small you don't need a handle; you just pour it like that. Yeah, and that's um, a rufous-sided tohi or a spotted tohi they call them. We have lots of those in our garden right now. Yeah. So I I I. I don't know what else to tell you, Janice. These are earthenware. They're, they're fired in an electric kiln and they are really bright colors. Um, as you saw from the very first picture, I also do stoneware fired in a soda kiln, but these six were all fired right here in Port Moody, actually all made this year. So that's... And the jug birds are sort of uh, one of your trademarks, aren't they? Or signature pieces? Yes. Yes, I can't see myself, Janice. Is this what you intended? I can see you and the page. Anyway, but this doesn't need to oh. be repeated, right? Well, actually, when you're talking, you show up. Oh, so everybody else can see me, but I can't. Um, I guess so. <clears throat> Pardon me. I, I was going to hold up. This is a um a, a gross beak. It's a, a new one, similar, and and this is a car, a red cardinal. But uh, those are just to show you that they're not very big and they're functional. Very nice for maple syrup or milk. Maple syrup sounds like a good plant. <laughs> Thank you, Jillian. I really appreciate you being here. Okay. Um, we have our next artist coming up, Julie McIntyre. Julie, are you with us? I am indeed, yes. Okay. Um, Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, yeah, so this is an earlier series I did. It's a crib size printed paper quilt scrolls and placemats. Um, they're all paper, they're all uh, prints and they're all sewn together, um, almost no glue. It's all uh, paper and thread. And I was just, uh, my, when my daughter was very little, I found that quilting in the small print format uh, worked very well with little bits of time. Uh, eventually I could actually create something quite big. Um, with these uh, and uh, much as women have done for many years. So I was looking at the whole idea of these bedtime stories and why these scary quests and dead mothers and horrible stepmothers and um, all of these things about why we teach these kids what what the whole psychology behind it is and and also the whole international kind of flavor and uh, so I created the uh, bedtime story series to honor my daughter um, and full uh, disclosure, she is now 22 years old. So there have been a few years uh, <laughs> since this work is done, but hopefully I thought it was kind of fun to bring it out for this show because um, it was meant and, and, and toured many, many schools. Um, so the moral of the story, uh, Aesop's Fables, um, as you can see, there's lots of different uh, combinations of the stories 
that, that you can recognize. Um, the crane maiden is made entirely of Japanese papers. I didn't do any of my own printing. I just used the Japanese papers to be as authentic as I could and some of their um, stitching techniques as well. Um, to tell the, this traditional uh, story. And um, on the, the final frame, we have um, the cat in the hat. And this was one I was a little concerned about copyright issues. So I just made sure I printed the colors of the hat and the fish uh, bowl and uh, the, the uh, umbrella. And I made a little quilt pattern and I just flipped it on its side and upside down and all the rest to make that kind of the, the, the whimsicalness of the cat in the hat. So a uh, lot of uh, a lot of different types of papers here and uh, it was a really fun project to do and uh, yeah I, I, uh, I went on to do some wearable art from this and including some work that went to the Fort Moody wearable art shows and um, yeah it was uh, it was it was great fun. Thank you so much Julie. <laughs> Um, our next artist, and you can read more about it on the digital gallery. She's got some wonderful information about the whole series. Our next artist is Nam Lee, and I'm not sure if Nam is with us this evening. Nam? Um, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Um, do you want to... Uh, say a few words about yourself and your artwork. Uh, yeah, um, my name is Nam. I'm a third year NIMSA student at Emily Carr. And um, I painted, um, I really like painting, so I try my best to uh, do it in my free times. Um, and um, this is um, called Wave Rider. It's like I made it during COVID and it's just like, um, I have to, as I'm doing a lot of music, it's like you have to catch up with the trend a lot. And um, yeah, sometimes like you have to facing like other people's work and if you feel like yourself is not that good and it's just like bonding with the waves. And um, also like during that time, like you, like COVID, you can't keep like your perfect sauce. You're gonna make a lot of mistakes. So. Like every single time you try to be honest, it's kind of like tear up a piece of your skins out. So that's why you like the figure is kind of like um, kind of like burned out and show some of the, I guess like a flesh and skins in there. And uh, and this one I also do made in during COVID, and it's like I saw like the um, cherry blossoms like looks really nice and I just want to put it in there and I doing that I have to think about a lot of my um, families and I think like one of the most valuable thing is just like working hard so I'm just thinking like uh, three generations of our family like we um, eventually will turn to a bees like we still gotta work hard and uh, yeah and it's kind of like a Japanese style thing I'm really into Japanese Thank you. Um, you are also doing um, projects with um, sound and with music and video as well, aren't you? Yeah, that's my main focus. Okay, well, maybe in a future time, we'll find out more about that. Thank you very much, Nam. Thank you for having me. And our next artist is Dave Kitching. Dave, would you like to come forward and turn your microphone off? Oh. I know Dave was going to be here this afternoon. Let's see. What if we... He was, I'm just gonna run through and see if he's here. We did a test this afternoon and I know he planned to be here. Oh no. Oh, I, okay. So um, Dave had, I'll just read you the information about him and I'll try to say a few words about his piece. Um, Dave has worked with metal ever since he completed his mechanical engineering apprenticeship in 1977 in various industrial facili facilities where fabrication and machining were his forte. 
where fabrication, uh, yeah, um, he discovered his creative side about 20 years ago when he was presented with a few mechanical components by his son, who at the time worked in a mechanical shop. They were interesting pieces and he was trying to figure out how he could join them together without welding. All of his sculptures are functional and each piece is mechanically fastened in his small machine shop. All the components are from found objects and thrift stores, or they have been sourced at uh, various local scrap yards and bought by the pound. His biggest challenge and enjoyment comes from trying to figure out how these pieces, uh, how to join these pieces together. And he says he hopes you enjoy them as much as he does. So his piece is called Terminator and it is a six and a half foot, um, uh, well, 71 inches sculpture uh, sitting in the middle of the gallery. And it's being all uh, put together with screws and nuts and bolts, as he says, no welding, no glue. Um, he's incorporated lights into it. And uh, it's been quite a hit with some of the kids. You'll have to come and have a look, see if you can figure out some of the pieces. He said these shoulder pieces, I wrote it down, uh, Magneto, I think, oh, I wrote it down, I've lost the piece of paper. Magneto, which it spins and uh, makes electrical energy, I think. Um, I see, uh, this is why I wish he was here to say it, to talk about it, but, and things like pistons and uh, uh, springs from um, motorcycles and from cars. So it's really interesting um, watching the kids try and figure out what all the parts are. So anyway, we will move on to our next artist who is Lori Jones Canta. Now Lori is also a member of the Blackberry Artist Society here and was here all day at the gift shop. Lori, do you wanna say a few words? Hi, uh, tell me if you can hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear oh. you just oh. fine, Lori. Oh, good. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. Thanks for finding me, Janice. I saw the display today. It's fabulous. I'm very excited to be a part of it. Really privileged. Um, oh, this piece is uh, cottonwood bark that I was inspired by Harry Potter. A lot of my work comes from literary sources. And uh, this is actually three carvings in one. The main central piece is called a cottonwood slab. It's all claimed wood from dead trees that fall at the side of the river in northern BC. Uh, they're found in different thicknesses. And I just started carving four years ago. So the things that are coming out of me are quite surprising. Uh, and that I can handle a knife without cutting myself. <laughs> um, this. Uh, took a while to make, probably about 80 or 90 hours. And it's acrylic painted uh, with actual Harry Potter uh, flags, uh, even though I just call it the towers because it's not really Hogwarts. Yeah, so, uh, and this is, um, I love to do castles. I have an obsession with castles and jesters and probably from my days of the friendly giant growing up. I love miniatures. So uh, this actually has a movable drawbridge. Uh, and I also love lights because I used to be in stagecraft and work with the Royal City Youth Ballet behind the scenes, uh, doing props and stage work. Uh, and this is, uh, I also do shadow boxes for children. And this of course is, uh, Puss in Boots or Le Chat Bot, uh, and they light up. And this is Wink and Blinkin and Nod, all done in paper clay. Uh, Jillian would uh, know that I don't have a kiln. I wish I did, but they air dry. And then acrylic painting. I also use found objects. Uh, and this series is from tarot cards. I was fascinated by the major arcana and I also make pieces from found objects, uh, thrift stores and 
um, mechanical shops and so they're put together using those things. Yeah, and uh, I'm just glad to be part of the show and around the so many artists with wonderful work. I found it interesting that Kate's uh, picture had a cottonwood tree in the middle. I caught that. And, <laughs> and uh, it's so nice to meet Norm, who's also working with wood for a hundred years almost. <laughs> anyway, good to Thank meet you. all of you. Please see the show. It's very exciting. Thank you, Laurie. Um, we're going to move on to our next artist, uh, Jenny Johnston, who worked on her pieces in collaboration with Elliot Reese. Jenny and Reese, would you like to come forward and speak about your artwork? Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, hello, my name is Elliot. And I'm Jenny. I'm 10 years old and me and my mom made these quilts during lockdown in 2020. Uh, when trying to find things to occupy our time during lockdown, sewing together was a calm and a fun way for us to connect. I started by drawing a pattern and choosing the colors of fabric. And then I would try to figure out how to transform his drawing into uh, a sewed piece that we sewed together. My mom would paint and stitch onto the piece and I would choose the title. The projects taught me a lot about how to sew and how quilts are made. So we made one quilt each month. Um, each of them were kind of inspired by what was going on in our lives at the time. And so uh, this one was called Watermelon's Revenge. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we, they were very improvisational. So working this way with Elliot really expanded my practice with making mixed media quilts and gave me a kind of very fun and whimsy to my work that wasn't there before. When I was naming the pieces, I thought of funny and playful names. It was It was really fun to make them. Yeah, and we would encourage everybody, uh, all parents and kids to work together and make some art. And we hope you enjoy the show and our pieces in it. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you very much, Jenny and Elliot. Uh, we'll move on to our next artist, David Hogan. Um, David, would you like to come forward and say a few words? Oh, David's got, oh, there he's turning his camera on. Yes, and yes, I'm here. You're here. Hi. Hi. Yes, I'm here. I have my lights off. And uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank Pomo Arts, Janice, and the entire Art for Life team for having uh, uh, two of my pieces at the gallery. My lighting is not very good, so I can see it is pretty fuzzy. But anyway, um, so these two pieces that are in the show are, I'm usually accused of being dark. So I decided to paint light colors and, and playful things. So the first one is the uh, hockey night. And I thought the kids might enjoy that, uh, an abstraction. And it kind of is whimsical. And uh, the second one is the wild hydrangeas, which uh, I painted the entire painting with my hands, with different, uh, different parts of my hands not just fingers, I'm talking the entire hand. So that was an interesting experiment with the hydrangeas. Um, actually, I wanted to call them drunken hydrangeas, but I didn't think it would be appropriate for, uh, uh, for youth to, to think of uh, drunkenness. So I called them wild hydrangeas instead. And uh, for me, art is a healing process. It's all about healing. And so most of my work uh, actually deals with that. Even the dark ones are, are, have to do with healing our wounds, healing our pain. And uh, I'm very happy and grateful to be part of the show. I love Port Moody. When I dropped off the work there, I got promptly lost and got to uh, a, a kind of uh, a tour of uh, Port Moody, which I just loved. And, and, uh, and I appreciate your sense of community. You guys are so uh, doing such a great job uh, in, in bringing the community together with all sorts of art. And, and I appreciated all the works that I've seen so far. So thank you. Thank you very much, David. It was lovely to meet you when you drove out on the rainiest day since last January. <laughs> thank you, Janice, thank you. 
Um, our next artist is actually a, uh, an instructor at Pomo Arts, uh, Ratna Gandhi. Ratna, would you like to come and say a few words about your work in Art for Life? Yes. Hi, Janice. Hello. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Thank you very much. And first of all, I'll say I really enjoyed all the work so far, and I'm excited to see the show in person soon. <laughs> so uh, I'm a sculptor by profession. And so this work is recently done here. I have done my master's in uh, creative sculptures from India. And I've just moved to Canada two years back. So recent immigrant and Port Moody was the first place where I started my career as an artist. I would say I started teaching clay art there as Jenny said. And also I got an opportunity to uh, work as artist in residence at Port Coquitlam a few months back. So this work was created there. So it's very much influenced by the corona situation that we all were facing a few months back. So it's called the window of hope. So where everyone was caught in the house, there are people who are trying to come out of it and uh, looking for something positive, positive that's going around. So yeah, this is influenced by that. This is again in the same theme. Uh, so it is called caged man where uh, the person, we were all stuck in the house and birds were free, birds uh, were flying outside. So sometimes looking at them, I think uh, people must have felt envy about the freedom that they were having and we were not having at the time. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, this is new normal. Again, how our lifestyle was changed significantly within days, I would say we were not able to meet our friends and then it was all on Zoom like we are having it now instead of having it in person. So yeah, that, that was the beginning inspiration. This is again, window of hope. So people in the house, they were looking out and just waiting for the time for the things to get back to normal and they could go out and yeah. So the same theme. And these are all in ceramics. Uh, right now I was working, I'm working in ceramics. So these are some animal, uh, you could say holders. So this is a bit functional piece, but with some of my uh, sculpture background, I always try to add uh, some human figure or animal forms to whatever I do. So. Yeah, so and that's it and thank you. <laughs> here is um, Ratna's work installed in the gallery along with some of Lori's and uh, Claudia Weep and two of the artists that we haven't spoken to yet. So that will be coming up. Oh, and actually more than two, three or four artists that we haven't spoken to yet. Our next artist is one of them, uh, Deanna Flake. Deanna, would you like to come forward and talk a bit about your artwork? Hello, Janice, you can hear me? I can hear you just okay. fine. Okay, so my name is Deanna Flake. I am an acrylic painter and illustrator with a background of fine art, interior design, and floral design. I I am strictly a pollinator artist, currently focusing on bees at this time or since 2012. I haven't really changed my practice or focus yet there, but um, excuse me, my series uh, that's in Art for Life is very new for me. I'm working with newer materials. I usually just worked with acrylic paint but I've now added textures into my pieces. So you can, I don't, it's hard to see on the screen. It's way easier to see um, in person, but there's different textures like Japanese uh, decorative papers, uh, uh, relief painting, like with um, 3D paint and uh, crackle paste for the soils. They are, based on the subject of soil. A lot of people see um, the, the stuff above the ground. And so I'm focusing more on 
what we're putting into our soils uh, so that uh, the um, agriculture and gardens can thrive. Um, because if we put pesticides and all of that yucky stuff into our soils, um, the plants and everything will soak that up through their roots and feed it to our pollinators. So that is what this series, this new series that I started back in 2019 is based off of, which is very new for me. But that is what is in the show and it's great to be a part of the show. Thank you, thank you thank for you. having me. Thank you, Deanna, it's nice to have you back in the gallery. Yeah. Our next artist is Barbara Ferris. And um, Barbara was out going to be out of town this evening. And um, so she's asked me to say a few words for her. She, Barbara Ferris is an emerging assemblage collage artist from Vancouver. Um, she likes to produce whimsical and fun creations that appeal to people's curiosity and wonder. Barbara says, my work is not typical fine art, although I'm quite capable of producing fine art. I enjoy finding unwanted and non-related parts to bring them together, creating new life for discarded items. And uh, Barbara is, uh, quite oft has been in, in Art for Life several times um, because of these uh, assemblage items. They're always very interesting. And I hope you'll get to see them in person. Our next artist is Justin Erickson. Hello, mm -hmm. Justin. Hi, that's me. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Finally, yes. <Hello>. you're out. <laughs> Everyone, can you hear oh. me? Yep. Yes, I can hear you. I'm going to scroll down and uh, you can tell us about the four pieces that you have in the uh, exhibition. Sure. So the four pieces that are included in the show, I've started to call like the botanical project. And uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I kind of started to focus on uh, my love for entomology and like the language of flowers. Um, so these are just kind of a story of like the different emotions that we were kind of going through and being hopeful for. Uh, throughout the pandemic and then of course I wanted to feature the bumblebee uh, simply because they are endangered and we need to look after them so each flower in this series uh, is something that you can put in your own garden to attract them to your gardens uh, and like of course the sunflower means adoration the hydrangea means genuine intention uh, the other two I think were a uh, peony which is pride and then, of course, we have a dahlia at the end, which is strength. And these are all emotions that we should be feeling, you know, to try and stay positive throughout all of the things that we've experienced over the last well, two years. Thank you very much, Justin, um, for telling us about your work. And uh, it's nice to have you in the exhibition. Oh, well, thank you for including me. Our next artist is Rowan Dickinson. Now, Rowan, I know you're here. I'll get you to unmute hello. and hello and tell us about your work. So all my works in this show, it's my first show. I've never been in a gallery, which is pretty exciting for me. And my works are all to do about felt, which is a really lovely medium to work in. It's so forgiving. You can kind of pick it up at any age. And I've just, I really enjoy whimsy. I really enjoy storytelling. And I try to reflect that in my works. This is a, a pin cushion I've made with uh, kind of referencing the uh, how 10 and 20 blackbirds baked in a pie, but just with one. <laughs> um, and my next work is very long. It's a wall hanging and it shows the kind of life cycle of flower. And I, I did most of my work, actually, I'm still a student at Langara for fine arts. And I did most of my work in my textiles class, which I was really delighted to have because I've done a lot of textiles work just throughout childhood as kind of crafts, but it was really lovely to see it as a art form too. I really, I, I, I would love it if any of my work could inspire someone to do something with felts or to do something in any sort of medium. I think it's just so lovely 
that there's this art show to share art with so many people of so many ages. Well, yeah. thank, thank you very much, Rowan. I appreciate you waiting. I know it's been a long wait <laughs> when we reversed it. <laughs> oh, well. Um, our next artist is Tara Devine. And Tara, would you like to unmute and tell us a bit about your work? And uh, you are a Port Moody artist too. Yes, hi Janice and hi. hello everybody. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's really a joy to be a part of this event and see everybody's beautiful artwork. It's uh, just a really good experience. Um, my name again is Tara Devine. I am a local artist in Port Moody. I'm an acrylic painter and a fluid artist. And my artwork uses a variety of paint consistencies, color, pouring techniques, and hand painting to create different effects on the canvas. Um, for this exhibit, I played with the abstract nature of the fluid art and gained some inspiration from my young family uh, to create my representation of, of childlike joy and imagination. Thank you very much. I appreciate you uh, telling us about your work. Tara. Thank you. Um, and we've already heard from Kate, so we will move on past her. And um, this is an installation shot that shows um, some of Rowan's work and Jillian's uh, jug birds and our I, who uh, is it? Our next, ah, and our next artist, Clarissa Banos. And I hope I've pronounced that right. I'm sometimes have, uh, if I don't remember to check, I apologize for mispronunciations. Uh, Clarissa, would you like to unmute and of tell course. us about your work? Of course. Well, first of all, thank you so much for including my artwork in this exhibition. I'm super excited to be and feel very privileged to be sharing this space along with so many talented artists. So I'm originally from El Salvador. I'm a visual artist, a visual arts instructor. And I have been living in the unceded territories of the Kikite nations in U.S. Minister since 2000. One, so it's been 20 years and yeah my work is inspired by my beloved Latin American culture and heritage. Um, I feel very passionate about um, pre Hispanic symbolism and um, iconography found in especially in textiles in North uh, Central and South American um, pieces and in this particular case the four um, paintings that I decided to include in the exhibition are directly related to the celebration of the Day of the Dead, which I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with. Um, this is a very powerful celebration in the whole Latin America, uh, mostly in Mexico, in the south of Mexico. And um, the reason why I decided to um, go with these four pieces is because um, as the title of the exhibition, Art for Life, this is basically a celebration of life. Um, it's um, very, um, sometimes it gets confused with a Mexican Halloween, but it has nothing to do with Halloween at all. It's a very powerful celebration um, that um, just includes well, it's basically celebrating three days from November 1st to November 3rd. And it's just um, to rejoice, you know, in the, uh, in the fact that we are alive and that we, um, we get together as families and create these like beautiful altars for our ancestors that have passed away. And we usually like bring their favorite foods, their favorite drinks or the favorite, um, for example, if they used to, if they love to paint when they were alive, we would bring, you know, like an easel or paintbrushes and such. And um, it also has to do a lot with the arrival of the monarch butterflies into the South of Mexico. And, um, what it really means is just a celebration of life in itself uh, with all the colors and a lot of symbolism, like the use of the butterflies as a symbol of 
transformation, for example, um, the four pieces that you see here, and you're, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the, sh the sugar skull symbolism, which really means that um, underneath, you know, our garments and any attire that we might wear underneath it all, we're just skeletons at the end of the day, we're one and the same. And these ladies over here, they're called Katrinas, and they are very, um, you can see them in parades. Um, I would probably compare this to a Mardi Gras in New Orleans, for example. It's a huge celebration, it's visually striking. And yeah, it just, you know, people prepare for it like probably six months in advance. And it's just, you know, it's stunning just to see. And I'm just fascinated by the power for meaning behind it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Clarissa. You're welcome. I appreciate you um, sharing the insight into uh, the, that cultural event. Thank you. Oh, I missed the last one. Sorry, I thought I was on <laughs> the last one. <laughs> My apologies. I'm doing a lot of apologizing tonight. Holy moly. Um, our next artist is Rachel Baker. And I don't think Rachel is here. Um, we'll have a quick look at her painting. Um, she tells us about her painting time. It engulfs you with storybook whimsy, evoking feelings of bright optimism um, and idealism. However, it was painted during the pandemic. It reveals a darker undertone, one of isolation, restriction, and adaption. So this is um, painting her painting time. And uh, we, uh, there's an installation shot. And our next artist is Lily Akbari. And Lily is not here either. Um, Lily uh, was born in Tehran and attended art university in Iran, receiving a diploma of visual art in 2003. Um, she works with different mediums of painting and likes to express her culture through colors and sculpture. Um, since 2003, she has been teaching art to all levels of children, teens and adults, and teaches art from her heart, building self-esteem in her students and challenging them to find their inner artist. She was in several group exhibitions in Iran and um, when she moved to Vancouver, she uh, started teaching at Como Arts and, from 2014, and uh, she is, was in several exhibitions here. And this is uh, Lily's painting, Three Trees, and I don't have any information on it. Um, now, um, just uh, this is the last artist, but just before we go, I noticed that um, Adeline is here um, and I, Adeline, if you want to come forward, um, I notice your camera's off and you're muted, but if you want to come forward, um, uh, Natalie has your uh, part, you're ready to share that you could um, say a few words. Adeline, you've turned your mic on. Oh, there you, okay. Are you there? Um, Natalie, could you share Adeline's? Um, okay, thank you. Um, I'm sorry we didn't, we missed you before. Oh, I can't hear you. It says your sound is on, but I can't hear you. Is it turned down maybe? I know mine's turned up. I went through that already today. <laughs> Oh, darn. No, sorry. Oh, we can, I'm sorry. We can't, your, it shows that your microphone is on, but we can't hear you. Okay, I'm so sorry. Um, then we will stop the share on that, Natalie, and just go to um, all of our artists. Um, Oh, on uh, the gallery, we're in gallery mode with all of our artists. 
And um, I'm so glad so many of you stayed until the very end. Um, it, it took far longer than we normally do for these kinds of things, but it's not often we have um, these large group exhibitions anymore when we have to do virtual um, receptions. And as everyone knows, we had planned to have an in-person event and um, have modified uh, things to because of the pandemic as usual. Um, I want to uh, say thank you to all of our artists um, for coming out and for being a part of this. And um, I will um, get them to stay on. Hold on, I have to find where my Facebook is so that I can um, so that I can uh, okay so that I can uh, move it uh, end this and the uh, video sorry I've got so many screens open here anyway I'm going to have my artists stay on for a moment but I'm going to say goodbye to all our guests Thank you very much for watching this evening and I hope you will get to visit the exhibition and I hope you will also get to uh, uh, see the next two artist talks. So everybody wave goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.